again, live by my principles. So I will say exactly how I do it. It definitely starts from, you know, one point and then on the right hand side of the page, it's many. And those many actually feed back into the beginning. Let's say you've gotten from vertical to the themes, you know, the audiences for those themes, you get to the topics, like the actual titles the titles that you want to cover of content. So whatever, I just simply call them topics. And you align some services or products to that same theme, you know? So you have this little bit of structure, like this is what we want to be known for. This is what we can use to support that. And you have that simple structure. Then what you end up doing is you end up filling the spaces. You sit there and you break it out and you say, okay, for a theme, if I had to, to, you know, take the theme, put the topics and figure out what content I can place inside of each. Um, because a theme can be like, you know, automation. Okay, something more specific about automation, something that gives a little bit of a hint of what you think about automation or what you'd like to be known for when it comes to automation. But let's say automation can be the theme and your, I don't know, your target can be CTOs or engineers, for example. But within that, you probably have topics. You, you have to try to make it as not as specific as you possibly can, but specific enough. So within that, you would have topics and probably with those topics, you would have multiple titles because the topics need to be covered for long term. You will be filling those spaces. Of course, the goal at the beginning is to take those topics and make sure that you have one piece of content for each so that you're serving the full strategy. And, and that's the beauty of it is that then you see where the holes are. <laughs> Along the way, you also see where the holes are. As you build the internal program for how to gather more thought leadership from inside the organization, you know, how you bring more resources into that editorial space, you will see that there are sometimes topics that are way more served than the others that you've identified as being equally important. So it just gives you a really nice visual way of seeing the full scale and then you can build that into the editorial calendar, right? You can then take those titles, those pieces of content, you can build them into an editorial calendar based on which main format you've chosen is most important, is most applicable for that title. And that's where we get to the nuclear thing that you were asking about earlier. Because at one point you will realize, you know, in some cases that many times it helps to have one big piece that sits in the middle. If that's uh, the best example I can give is it's a book. It's a yearly book of thought leadership that you put out uh, to clients, to the world, etc. And you build towards that book and you end up using the content that you create, some of the content that you create for the book, some of it outside of the book. But at the end of the day, the book becomes like a very good representation of the platform as a whole um, and also gives you, you know, long form content that you can break down into smaller pieces. I'm a big fan of doing long form content.